Greetings, and welcome to another edition of The Boogeyman. On today's episode, what I wanted to do was go into a little bit of a kind of a beginner's guide to horror. Um, I recently had a discussion with a friend about what types of films would be good for a beginner, what types of things would interest a person who might want to pursue the horror genre and, and learn more about it. And the first obvious question is why? Uh, why horror? What What is it about the genre uh, that makes it interesting for people? <clears throat> I think there's a few things that that, that make it interesting and one of the most common tropes in the horror genre is that it's about the pursuit of the unknown even and especially uh, when that pursuit is dangerous or involves uh, seeking out danger uh, and chaos a prime example is the film 1408 about a father trying to learn more about what potential afterlife his his family member might be going through and of course it becomes especially dangerous for him because the afterlife that he finds is very corrupted and, and ghostly and, 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 and kind of malevolent. Which is always fun. Another common theme within the horror genre is that it kind of emphasizes abandoning limits. And what I mean by that is this idea that, oh well I don't have the capacity to go this far. Um, horror basically says, fuck that. No, you can go this far. In fact, you can go even further. A prime example would be the film Event Horizon, in which a group of explorers on a rescue mission uh, attempt to find a lost uh, spaceship and kind of enter into this very mysterious, dark, otherworldly um, sort of environment that keeps on becoming more and more dark. And it turns out that they actually have kind of opened a portal to hell. And becomes kind of this fun ride through this imagining of what would happen if there was such a portal opened up. They don't stop at the door and, and, and fear going in, they just dive right in. Another aspect of horror that might not be appropriate to explore too much for beginners, but is definitely an aspect of it, is this idea of abandoning comfort zones. We all have these comfort zones uh, where we're okay with going here, but maybe not going uh, too far over here. Um, horror basically has no limits. Uh, it's, again, it's all about abandoning limits, so there is no comfort zone per se. Uh, all of it is free to play. Uh, there's a couple of films that explore perspectives that you might not want to explore, but are just kind of interesting because of the fact that they're so unpopular of a perspective, uh, and that is the serial killer perspective. Uh, there's two films that I can think of off the top of my head, which is Maniac and Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, which both explore this idea of seeing the deranged mind through the eyes of the deranged. Um, definitely not for the weak of heart, but uh, which the beginner might be, but it's definitely well within the tropes of this idea of abandoning limits, exploring the darker elements uh, of existence, and being fearless about it. Again, because of the subject matter of abandoning comfort zones, there's obviously films that are even well above and beyond what I could even recommend for myself. Um, specifically, the uh, American guinea pig, guinea pig series from Japan, uh, or a Serbian film. These are all types of films where even I watch and kind of think to myself, I definitely abandoned my comfort zone here. This is well above and beyond. I don't want to say I don't appreciate that. Um, but you definitely got to kind of be aware that you're going to be uncomfortable and that's kind of part of the point. I never fault a film for making me feel incredibly uncomfortable and, 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 and disturbed by what I see because that is kind of the point of horror. Um, but there is a line that, that, that even I'm not overly fond of crossing and I think every horror fan has that line. Uh, so I would stick um, with Maniac or Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. <clears throat> Uh, if you're afraid of violence, I would go with Henry. It's a little less violent than Maniac. Both films are really great at exploring the world through the eyes of the deranged, which is a perspective that is definitely well within, uh, well outside of, I should say, most of our comfort zones. This is a personal favorite of mine in terms of, of subject matter that's common uh, throughout the horror genre, and that's exploration of the theme of how far you would go to protect or save or give vengeance for loved ones. 
Um, there's a couple of films. Um, one I just recently watched called Maggie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I make fun of him, but he actually is really great in this film. Uh, it's a film about a father trying to protect his daughter, the the eponymous Maggie, who basically kind of gets infected with a zombie disease, and, and it doesn't really explore too much as a zombie disease specifically, um, but it does explore it as a dangerous disease that's not very uh, good for the public, uh, and the father kind of protects her from, from people who want to send her away to quarantine. It's a wonderfully emotional film. Uh, Arnold actually does a really wonderful job as the father figure, uh, and this is kind of a common trope, especially in uh, Stephen King's writings and some of the more everyman type of writers. Um, of horror. Uh, another film that, that kind of goes under this theme is The Crow. It kind of explores how far you would go to make a right of a wrong. And I'm not saying that the violence in the film is necessarily the path to go to turn a wrong into a right. I'm not even sure if that's even possible per se. Uh, but the film definitely explores themes of lost love, uh, how far you would go for a loved one, um, the types of experiences that that might do to, and, and how that might change you. And it's definitely interesting in that regards. Another film that a lot of people might not think of in terms of loved ones is the um, Clive Barker film Hellraiser, <clears throat> which is at its heart a story about uh, a young daughter trying to save her father from a very unhealthy relationship with uh, her stepmom, who is just, for lack of a better way of describing it, quite the queen bitch. Basically opens a path to hell or, or a very hellish existence uh, that definitely threatens the uh, Christie's father. Uh, it becomes kind of a very mess of, of different characters, but at the heart of it it's basically about this daughter trying to protect her father, and then of course the series changes that perspective a little bit. But at the, for the very first Hellraiser, that's what the story is about. Another thing that's common throughout the, the horror genre in general is this idea of exploring uh, the dark shadows by proxy. And what I mean by the proxy is that you're not actually going into these hellish existences. You're not actually stepping foot in hell. You're watching as somebody else does. So it's a very safe sort of exploration. An example of such a film would be Lord of Illusions, in which you're kind of stepping foot into this world where magic is a very chaotic and, and dangerous force and is very real in this environment. But again, you as an audience member are never in direct threat. You get to watch as these people try to manipulate this world and, and live in this world safely. It's like a ride along um, in a cop car. You're never in danger yourself, but you get to kind of experience the adventure uh, vicariously. Another film that does this exploration of the unknown in a very interesting way is called Beyond the Black Rainbow, a highly recommended film even for beginners. It's a very visually oriented film, not a very violent film, but definitely a very strange film. And that's kind of the point, is that it takes you to some very strange places and kind of delights in um, taking you by the hand through these very weird and wonderful uh, worlds and it raises a lot of questions. It's not a drug trip movie, even though people might make it out to be. It's actually a film that cautions about the sort of different and frightening worlds you would open up for yourself um, by expanding your mind, so to speak. Uh, it's a very, very, very interesting film. Uh, I highly recommend it if you get a chance. Another thing that horror does that is very interesting is that it explores what we find as society sacred by imagining it profaned. And what I mean by that, um, there's the very kind of cliched uh, child horror, uh, things like The Exorcist, in which uh, the character of Regan goes through a very corrupting force that very much so debilitates her innocence. Uh, and Children of the Corn, this idea of innocence profaned into uh, this vile force. Uh, love, uh, like I said, as a, as a sacred force is kind of profaned in the movie The Crow, uh, and we kind of explore this. And, and the more we explore the corruption of love being profaned, the more we realize how sacred uh, to our, our hearts love really is. 
Another example of, the, of something we find sacred being profaned is in the movie Poltergeist, uh, in which the idea of the nuclear family, very, very kind of sacred bond that we have within our family members, becomes profaned by these ghostly forces that try to tear the families apart. Uh, one of the things I like about the Poltergeist is one of a few horror movies that ends on a positive note. The family never gets destroyed by these forces. Um, which makes it actually a really good film for beginners because there's none of this overarching darkness that you leave the theater with. Now last but not least in terms of the, the things that horror movies do that might interest uh, somebody to begin to, to explore the genre is this idea of the fun of fear or the, the fun house uh, mentality of horror. This is apparent in things like uh, Army of Darkness or, or any of the Evil Dead films. Now, some people might kind of think that the idea uh, that fear and fun don't really mix. <clears throat> to that, I will kind of question things like uh, roller coasters, skydiving, uh, any of the adrenaline junkie type things where we do actually enjoy fear as long as we know that it's kind of uh, encapsulated in this safe version of things. We don't like fear where we actually legitimately worry about our safety, but when we have reason to believe that we are safe, um, like skydiving uh, with the instructors and all the safety protocols that are around it, the illusion that we are in danger excites us as a species. <clears throat> So again, the Army Darkness films go through this kind of fun house of horrors uh, mentality. The VHS films, VHS 1 and 2 specifically, definitely emphasize this Halloween love of going through these haunted houses and, and, and seeing all these creatures on the streets. And, and, and very much so a, a roller coaster ride of all of the all that is deliciously evil. So there's a few films that I mentioned throughout the course of this video that are great for, for beginners. Um, in terms of the horror genre, if you actually have an open mind about it, there's there's quite a wide spectrum of films. Um, there's even arguably the kitty horror genre, things like the, uh, Disney's The Haunted Mansion, Scooby-Doo, uh, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Crypt Keeper cartoons, or even Tales from the Crypt, um, where you know it's very much so uh, catered towards the, the the kind of child either either a child in the case of many of them or in the tales from the crypt films the child within us uh, because the tales from the crypt films are uh, and tv series are obviously catered towards adults that delighted in the fun house of horror mentality hello boys and girls tonight's dodgy tale and all that sort of um, theatrics that were very much so kind of like a carnival environment and it becomes very fun for that so there are a couple of reasons of why you might want to be interested in the horror genre. Of course, anybody who is already in the horror genre understands the delight and the glee within it, but maybe a beginner might not. And so hopefully there's a few reasons and a few films to explore those reasons of why you would be interested in the horror genre and why you might want to begin to pursue being entertained by, a, like I said, what is deliciously evil. So without further ado, this is The Boogeyman, signing off. Uh, if you have any other films that you might recommend to a beginner, uh, definitely comment below. Uh, don't forget to like or subscribe if you haven't already. This is The Boogeyman, signing off, hoping you a fond and deliciously evil time. Boom.